Philip took his studies very seriously, but he did date as much as any other guy in college. Hey Morgan, you should uh, wear those jeans more often. <laughs> All right, what you want, hit? There was only one woman who remembered a very scary encounter with Philip Markov. School's been so stressful this semester. <sighs> Phil. Yeah? Come on. What? We're just friends. I know. She talked about how he threw her up against a wall. He wouldn't take no for an answer. Stop. Stop. No. They had been friends. So if so, she had trusted him. This wasn't a stranger danger. This was somebody that she had known. And there he is, you know, attacking her and, and essentially assaulting her. While he was there, he met another volunteer, a pretty young student named Megan from New Jersey. Megan is a senior and Philip is a sophomore. All right, so we buy some chips, right. like we have, and uh, then we place bets. Keep ours low so we don't break the bank. <laughs> oh, that's what it's like to have close to a good hand. <laughs> <laughs> Megan and Philip met when they were very young. It's obvious that she was very trusting of Philip. He was the younger one, but there's something about the relationship that makes it seem like she was the more childlike one. She was close to her family, and I think she really relied on Philip to, to continue that kind, of, uh, that kind of existence that she had in New Jersey. And so there was no reason for her to doubt Philip. If anything, she had every reason in the world to cling to him. <laughs> He probably was one of the classic self-loathing nutbags who would probably victimize a lot of those people that were in confusing places themselves. But I truly believe that Philip Markov's first victims of violence were the transgender community that he was hooking up with. These were the people that I think he victimized first. At the time, it was reported that Philip had exchanged emails with somebody on Craigslist. While he's propositioning strangers who he meets on the internet for sex, he also proposes to Megan. Oh my God. Phil, oh my God. Megan McAllister, will you yes. marry me? Yes, Phil. Yes. yes. She saw the side of Philip Markov that I think a lot of other people saw, just this straight-laced guy trying to get through med school. Early in 2009, Philip Markoff buys a 9mm semi-automatic gun at the State Line Gun Shop in Mason, New Hampshire. He uses a fake ID and is fingerprinted. I'll take it. But Philip Markoff's gun purchase plunges him into a deadly game of sexual thrill-seeking. And very soon, the game goes way too far. Philip Markov is a good-looking med student with a beautiful fiance. But between studying and planning his wedding, Philip is trolling for sex online and has bought a gun. During the ceremony, the Boston Globe snaps a picture of the would-be doctor trying on the emblem of his new profession for the first time. That was an incredible find. I mean, there he is beaming, a man with the world before him. He is going to be a doctor. He is so proud and so happy. And this is the photo that we found right after we found out that Philip Markov was the man at the center of, of these terrible crimes. In the now iconic photo, Philip sports an ear-to-ear -ear grin, happy his life is taking shape. But no one could guess the next chapter. But on the inside, this kid was an absolute monster. By 2009, sex addict 53885 is very active. He is pursuing the erotic services section of Craigslist when he spies an ad that reads, if you'd like to spend some time with a sweet blonde, give me a call. Philip responds to the ad. She would meet them at the elevator so she could size them up and figure out, okay, do I trust this person enough to take them back to my room? Do I trust this person enough to make them a client? She definitely wasn't foolish. She, she was street smart. 
But when Trisha walks to the elevator and sees a tall, good-looking guy, she greets him and motions for him to follow her. If you're a professional escort, I think the last person that you expect to be a nutbag is Philip Markov. You pass Philip Markov on the street or in the coffee shop, probably wouldn't have paid him any, uh, any mind whatsoever. You know, not a guy that uh, would have struck fear in anyone's heart. So, what do you want to do tonight? Lie down on the floor. behind your back. You don't have to do this. And she's, of course, terrified at this point, and she has no idea what's going to happen to her. And she's very compliant. She's a small thing. She's barely over five feet tall. This guy's over six feet tall. She is not going to fight him. And when he starts to make demands, like asking for her cash, she meets them. Philip binds her with the zip ties he purchased from the hardware store. Where are your valuables? In my purse. As odd as it sounds, Philip doesn't ask for an erotic massage or any sort of sexual contact. There's no money on the credit cards. He was very polite. And he actually asked the woman, can I have your underwear? Can I have your panties? And she gave them to him. They're like, yeah, sure. If you want my dirty panties, you can have them. Could you just leave my ID so I could get home? Philip takes $800, her credit cards, and some gift cards, but he leaves her ID. There was a theory, there was, a, there was speculation that perhaps he was stealing from these women in order to, to make some money because he had none. He was in grave debt, uh, over $100,000 worth of debt. So he was in a lot of financial trouble. Please, please just let me go. He's always very calm. He's, he, he never curses at her. He tells her to be quiet, but he doesn't tell her to shut up. He's almost gentlemanly in the way that he's going about this, this armed robbery. In 15 minutes, I'll call security and tell him I heard something in the room. Come on in. When he presented the firearm, it appears that she fought back. Put your hands behind your back. Put your hands behind your back! And as she continued to fight, that was when he shot her. <laughs> Julissa is shot a total of three times in the chest, <laughs> stomach, and heart. Markov then flees the room. Come in. Right on time. Come in. Have a seat, relax. Relax. Can I get you a cocktail? <clears throat> no, thank you. Thank you. Well, you're not from around here. Um, I'm from Boston. Boston. Boston's nice. So, what do you do in Boston? I don't want to hurt you. I'm just broken. I need some cash or some cards. Get on your knees. attempted to gag 
Cynthia with a, um, a ball gag, so her DNA, his DNA were on that when we ultimately seized that in his apartment. Do you have a laptop? No. If you have a laptop and you're lying to me, I will kill you. I don't. He's already killed Jalissa Brisbane. This is on his mind. And this time he's not calm. This time he knows how things can go wrong. Who is that? Who would be calling you? Her husband, he would phone, make sure that she was okay. And if she didn't answer the phone, then he knew she wasn't okay and that he, and he had to go and, and find out what was going on. And he ends up uh, bursting into the room to rescue her. And there's a bit of a standoff in that room. Who are you? Who is this? Why did they find that stuff in our apartment, Phil? Okay, how did it get there? It's not what it seems. It just seems so bad. I know. And unfortunately, it's only gonna get worse. But it's not what it seems. I think that when this all broke, she was, I, I don't think she could have been any more floored, any more devastated than, than she was. By now, she knew the total scope of what the man who she thought she was going to marry was capable of doing. I love you, Megan. I'm sorry, Phil. I can't keep coming to see you. I know. I'm sorry, Pocket. Initially, she stood by Philip Markov, we don't fault her for that. You know, to do otherwise would be to abandon all these dreams, you know, uh, with the snap of a finger. And, you know, she wasn't prepared to do that. I, um, I have to go to school. I've taken down our website. I love you, Pocket. No matter what they say. Markov is taken off suicide watch, but he still has death on his mind. Philip made a primitive scalpel out of a ballpoint pen and cut his arteries in a way that a medical student would know would lead to death. In his own blood, on his cell wall, he wrote the words Megan and Pocket it would have been their one-year wedding anniversary. He had a really good knowledge of uh, medical procedures, and he was able to commit this act against himself without anybody knowing. He stuffs toilet paper into his mouth to prevent resuscitation and places a plastic bag over his head and another over his feet to keep the blood contained and hidden from guards. He did not want anybody bringing him back to life. In the morning, when they came in, it was way past uh, where you could actually do anything to, to save him. So he was very intent on, uh, on committing this act. 